we can do better than that. Come on, everybody. Big round of applause, everybody in the house. Uh, this is called Night of Gospel Laughs. Uh, it is uh, a vision that God gave a brother of mine. And uh, it was just by, uh, when I say, you know, they say God orders uh, the steps of the righteous. I'm not saying I'm righteous, but if God ordered myself, then I'm righteous, you know. Um, <laughs> So, you know, we met, you know, uh, I wasn't originally supposed to be there that, uh, on the first uh, edition, but guess what, I was there and God has blessed it and it's been going on year after year and it's been getting bigger after bigger, I can see lights in the house. It's Christmas season, it's a season to be merry, it's a season where we bring our friends from. And the good thing about this kind of event is because it's family friendly, uh, you can come with your kids, your family, your husband, your wives, your landlords, <laughs> your tenants. You can even invite those who are owe you money. So at the end of the day, you can say, hey, my brother, where's my money? <laughs> you know, this is a family-friendly event. And you know, this time of the year also reminds us that, oh my God, you see, if you're from uh, the motherland, and I'm sure like, it's probably like that in the, you know, in the islands too, this is that time of day that you look forward to. Uh, you know, they, you know, they say so many things about Africa. You know that uh, there's not enough food to go around. But, but you see, this time of the year, we always know that there's always food to go around. Now, there are some food that some of us don't eat until this time of the year. <laughs> For those of you who know, you know. Like what you say, but you know, you know, right? Like chicken, close round. This time of the year, rice, fried rice, jollof rice. I bet if you know, if you know jollof rice, make some no! Oh, okay, I'm not everybody know jollof rice, yes. Now, you know, for those of us who grew up in Africa, this is that time of day where you know that everything you've not eaten from January, this month you eat everything, it compensates for everything. And this is also the month to show love, this is the month to give, to receive, to show, you know, and it's also the month to forgive, you know, forgive. And you know, some of us will keep forgetting that Christmas is not just about you. Because you know we keep asking for gifts and all that. It's about Jesus. Yeah. Jesus is the reason for the season. Yeah. So please remember, as we are asking for gifts, it's not your birthday. No. It's Jesus' birthday. Yeah. Some of you just use this season to just ask for things that does not belong to you. All right. So let us all remember that. And that being said, uh, I'm happy that we're all here tonight to support this dream, to support this mission. And guess what? Next year will be the tenth anniversary. Come on, somebody make some noise. I know of uh, people who were born around then, and I saw some of them at the lobby tonight. I'm like, wow, look at you. I saw you when you were like a baby. And now they're jumping all over the place, pulling Santa's beards. I'm like, wow, <laughs> look at how time just flies like that. And uh, I'm happy to be here tonight because, uh, you know, this is my 10th year in the United States. Yeah. I've for 10 years. And uh, I'll tell you something, I've been influenced by the Western culture too. Uh, but no matter the influence, I still thank God that, you know, no matter how long I've stayed in this country, uh, there are some things that will not affect me. Right. And that's because I was born and raised in the motherland. Right. Depression cannot affect me. Because okay. I was born and raised in depression. <laughs> one of the happiest people in the world in depression. So I don't care what kind of depression happens, Western depression cannot affect me. <laughs> as long as I have money in my pocket, oh, I can never be depressed. Yeah. So you can imagine my surprise when I hear the news that somebody who has $10 million in his account committed suicide. I'm like, what? <laughs> Who's going to spend all that money? Even if I want to kill myself and I remember, oh my God, I have 1000 in my account. I'm like, oh no, man. That's just 1000 I'm not dying, man. I'm like, oh no, man. Let me finish spending that money. Even if it's $1, I'm like, you know what? I can still buy a Happy Meal at McDonald's, you know? <laughs> So you see, that's one thing that I think of, and I'm sure that some of you share that same vision. Like, what? What kind of depression is that? You know? Here, I don't, let me tell you something. I don't know how those terrorists do it. Terrorists will come at me. Do you know? Do you know the format? They were like, no, we want you. We'll bump your city. And we'll give you a family. Twenty million dollars. I'm an African, I will say, why don't you give me the twenty million dollars and give the bank the money? It makes sense, right? Give them the bomb, give me the money. Don't do that to me, you know? And another thing is, it, it don't make sense. I don't even get time. I'm an African. Let me tell you, no matter how bad it is in Africa, you see us say, well, you know what? Tomorrow's going to be better. We, we, you just believe we have hopes. 
you know, and that is something like, oh my God, no matter how long I'm staying here, I still thank God that I was born and raised in the motherland where, you know what, you have to scratch for everything. So, you know, let me tell you, I realized that in America, kids can wake up and say, Mom, I think I don't want to go to school anymore. I'm tired. And where we come from, that's called evil spirits. For you to wake up and just tell your mom, you will not even have that effort unless one evil spirit has entered you. And believe me, Nigerian moms or African moms or black moms know how to send that evil spirit back to you. You don't even need to pray. You just need to move back a little bit and throw that hand back. Like Reno William. And once that hand land on Jesus is love. Tell your mom, mom, I want to go for my PhD. But I want to drop out of school to PhD. That's what I love. I, you know, I love African moms for that. Another thing I love them for is the fact that, you see, in this part of the world, right? You hear moms go out and they give instruction to their kids in direct tests. Like, uh, John, I'm gonna go get some groceries right now. I'm gonna need you to do dishes. Clean your room and do your homework, right? That is a direct, we call it direct instructions. And that is why kids here can be angry sometimes. Have you noticed that when you bring kids from the islands or from the motherland, once they get into America, even if they were average students, they become straight A students. You know why? Because our mothers give us instruction in the opposite. They tell you the opposite of what they want you to do. And the spirit of the living God will translate for you. Like this is my African mom. It's going out. The same thing with the Western mom. You're like, Shay, I'm going to get groceries. You see those dishes in the sink? Please, leave them. Don't wash it. Me that is your servant, I will come and wash it for you. And you will see yourself. And the spirit of the living will say, it's a trap, it's a trap, it's a trap. You better do the opposite of what she asked you to do. And you're going to die today. And she's going to go. Uh, your homework, please don't do it. Just sit and be watching TV. And you become my straight A student, right? And I come back. <laughs> and in the Western world, you know, your parents threaten you and you know the threat. Oh, Junior, you're supposed to be doing your homework, you're watching TV. Time out! You know your punishment. You know what I love? African parents, they leave the threat for your imagination. <laughs> they don't finish the sentence. If you're supposed to be doing your homework and you're watching TV, she comes back. Yeah. What? John? Oh, you're watching TV. <laughs> Instead of doing your homework. Oh, good. You was... <laughs> You're like, oh my God, I don't know what she's going to do. Because oh. once they snap that finger, mm -hmm, anything can happen. You can be in the state of coma for one week. You can see Jesus and come back. You can die. And you know, you, you can't, you see, let me tell you something. You can't threaten them. With the Department of Child Service, you're like, yeah, you touch me, I'm gonna call the Department of Child Service. How long will it take them to get here? 20 minutes, you're dying in two. Let's give our mothers a big round of applause. Give them a round of applause. Well, tonight, uh, we have a strong lineup for you. And uh, when I call their names, I want you to make noise for them like they are Michael Jackson. Okay? Let them feel very special because they are here to make you laugh tonight. And if I were you, if you're not in the mood to laugh, just remember that you're already paid. So don't waste your money. Even if it's not fun, just ah! Make sure you laugh, you know. Because uh, you paid your money, make sure you put your money to good use. Okay? And I want to tell some people like, uh, if they don't make you laugh, uh, it's not because they're not funny. It's probably because what you're going through is more than your talents. <laughs> so in that case, you don't need a comedian. You need a pastor to lay hands on you. So you have the anointing to laugh. Okay? All right, somebody's laughing like they just got paid, all right? Mm, that sister over there, I can tell you just got paid. Because everything happens, you're like, ah! 
she just got paid. All right, ladies and gentlemen, tonight we have a whole list of comedians from all over the United States of America to make you laugh tonight. Please, put your hands together for the list of comedians. I'm gonna be calling, they're not coming out right now, but I'm just gonna lie and list them. And I want you to uh, make some noise for all of them before I start calling them one after the other. Uh, tonight we have all the way from Maryland, Siwa! Also, we have New York's own Mama Shade. And we have New York's own Simon Adeli. And we have the world famous Broderick Ryan. But first tonight to entertain us, ladies and gentlemen, make some room. Oh, 
over for me. He had decades to see. He, no way, Carla, let me explain. He was not ambiguous old. His eyebrows were white. Do you know how old you have to be for your eyebrows to say, no, we're done being black. When it's going to be white, we're on now. Just Sammy Sosa, just. <laughs> my mama raised me right. I gave him my seat. But then he laid down, and, he sat down and closed his eyes. And I got scared because I didn't know if he was sleeping or if he was sleeping because he was that old. Jesus could take him any moment. He could take him. I moved to New York City, though, to, uh, you know, become an educator. You know, that's why I moved here. Okay, some people clapped. Other people were like, we don't care. It's okay. It's fine. People ask me when they find out that I taught kindergarten. They're like, what is it like? You know, teaching little kids, being a kindergarten teacher, all it means is that I know things about your family that you don't necessarily want me to know. That's all it is. Like, I can tell which, I can tell which kids have roaches by how they respond to insects in the classroom. There's always one kid, right? She see a bug, she thinks she's super killer bug. They see a bug, they run, they scream, not super killer bug. Here she go before anybody can respond. I got it! Oh, I got it! I'm like, why are you dancing? This is not soul track. What is wrong with you? Dancing in this classroom. And where did you get a cape from? Put the cape in your cup. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Then she got the nerve to say this to me. It's just a bug. It don't even fly like the ones in my house. Good. And you see him killing bugs outside? Don't go back to his place. <laughs> I, I'm just, listen, I don't know, maybe he had him just growing up. I'm just saying, you have decisions to make. You gotta be careful out here. You gotta be careful. Love to travel, but guys, men, black men especially, you gotta be careful traveling. TSA is looking for any reason to ask you to step out of line. I'm coming through the Chicago airport the other day. I go through the little metal detector. Y'all know this one? <laughs> right? I go through. They're like, sir, we're going to need to check you. I'm like, oh, here we go. Right? But you know, hey, they're keeping us safe. And then they said something I've never heard TSA say before. They were like, sir, we're going to need to check your groin area. I was like, what? I was like, huh, huh. excuse me, Mr. TSA. I'm pretty sure I don't have no metal down there. And then he leaves. And he points to the little metal detect, the little screen. There was a little screen. And that was a yellow box. I was like, well, that's interesting. I've never seen that. I don't know. I don't know what that's about right there. He leans in and says, yeah, that's a common misconception of machines. They don't just check for metal. They also check for density. I was like, density? Ooh. We also put up a sign or something. Let a brother know. Right? I didn't even go straight to my gate, y'all. I waited just behind security to watch other people walk through because I had formulated a theory. Right? Lots of Asian dudes walking through. No problem. No problem. Few white dudes walking through. No problem. There was an African. I was like, well, if the theory holds. Now, if the theory holds. I kid y'all. He walked through the little machine. They were like, sir, we're going to need to check you. I was like, hey, there's something to it. Right, he got angry, though. He was living. You can tell this has happened to him more than once. He's like, why did you always do this to me? What is this density here? Oh, yes, yes. I was like, oh, my goodness. I was like, TSA is doing too much. I like to travel, though. But when I travel, I like to travel on a budget. Any of you ever done Airbnb? Y'all done that before? Airbnb? See, this is my thing. I ain't got nothing against Airbnb, but I feel like if something in your apartment, your house is a little different, right, just let somebody know. Put up a little sign say, listen, this might not be what you think. I get into the shower in this Airbnb in Atlanta, 
and the water pressure, the shower pressure was aggressive. Right? It was aggressive. Like, and this is my thing. When I take a shower, I like my skin on the bone. You know what I mean? Ain't no reason for the water pressure to be so painful. Have y'all ever seen little black girls jump double dutch? That's how I had to take a shower. Just And I wasn't concerned just for me. That's not it. I was like, what if an old black man got in the shower? Right? And he marched doing the movement. It might create flashbacks, a little triggers from when he marched and the water hoses was on. What I'm saying is that the landlord had the water pressure set to Jim Crow. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> but I love teaching, though. I love teaching. One of the reasons why I love teaching is because, like, like I can tell a lot about parents, right? Just by the names they get their kids. Or I even see the parents. There were, there were these two little girls in my school. Now, their names sound normal at first, right? Like, one little girl, her name was Anita. That's a normal sound name. We love Anita Baker, right? But she had another sister named Iwana. Wait, no, it gets worse. Some of that. Is that, is that a warning? Is that, are you telling me my time is up? Is that what you, oh, okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you, DJ. Thank you. All right, I'm going to just finish this and then we're going to go. All right, I'm going to get out of here. Got in the spirit, you know. Uh, all right, so Anita, Anita, and her sister name was Awana, and their last name was Man. Oh. Anita Man, Awana Man. Now, ladies. <laughs> kids after your personal problems. Right? Like your children should not be marketing tools for your woman. Right? The kids just, mama just taking them to, to Target and, and, and Macy's just losing the kids on purpose just so she could call them to the customer service booth. Yes, I need a man to come to the customer service booth. Y'all don't hear me, Jesus, I need a man. I say I want a man to come. Y'all, my name is Alvin Irving. Y'all have been amazing. Thank y'all so much. Y'all rest in the show. Good day, everybody. Get your bags on. Get your bags on. Get your bags on. Okay, uh, wasn't that guy hilarious? Yeah. Let's give him a round of applause, man. All right, uh, the next person I'm about to call is uh, a lady who puts uh, creative ideas into skits so that she'll be able to reach out to so many more people. Uh, she represents the uh, everyday next door neighbor, contemporary mom, and lives every day, you know, the challenges, the ups and downs, and I'm sure that a lot of mamas in that house will be able to relate to that. And I got an amen. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are East Coast. Big round of applause. Put your hands together for the lives of Mama Shade! Hello? Hello, hello. I've been trying to reach you. <sighs> Did you enjoy the service? It was powerful. Only if my children will just come and join me in church. They are lost. They want to be American by force, by fire by force. Can you imagine? Even for me, that my only son, oh, 
that's my favorite channel to be on. Shani is going to go more to know that that's my favorite channel. But Femi, I wish, I just wish that he would just pull his pants off just a little bit more. Yes! He's spoiled! Ah! Oh, my sister, it's too much. Even I have to leave my room because this uh, Shadi is here without her friend, would you? Make it noise! It's very rude, I don't like it. That's why I said, let me come to the living room. Is this my Oh, sorry. You will not see my girl. Let me call you back. Let me call you back. Yes, 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 yes. Excuse me. What is this? Ogini. Ilode. What's up? Which other language should I use? Sorry, sorry, sorry. So you don't see that on the phone. Would you? So you are even here. You didn't greet me or I saw you. Is that how they greet in your country? Sorry. Nonsense. Where is he? Where is Femi? Where is he? Where is Femi? Let, let me tell you people something. Today's service was very powerful. You didn't go. You didn't go to church. When did you come? The time, every time that I've been waiting you all to come to church. Did you come to church? No, I was here. I went to my church. You didn't go to church. You didn't go to church. You, you always come here asking for Femi. You think I don't know? Eh? You think I don't know? Nonsense. You do too much. Sometimes I can't. Hello? Am I not talking to you people? You mean Jalo? Jennifer Lopez? Jennifer? Oh, really? Look oh, at this one now. Mommy, Jennifer wants me in her new movie. Oh, Jennifer wants me in her new movie. Jennifer now. Jennifer from the block. Who is Jennifer from the block? No, it's not Jennifer Lopez. So it's PGD. Mommy, mommy, mommy. I can't put that phone down. Mommy, you know PGD. Sit down, my friend. That's your sister. Nonsense. So Do you see God? Where did I go wrong? Eh? You go wrong. Tell me. Where did I go wrong? Oh, see my first born. She never reached the airport. When does she want to see Jennifer Lopez? I'm going to next week. Remove the phone from your ear. Not me now. I'm going to find something to do. Go, go. You're even irritating me. Get up. Get up. Get up now and go. No job. Nothing to do. I don't even know how to do that. Hey, Femi, that's the dog. Don't disrespect me. Femi, Femi, Femi. Get the door for me. Ah, nonsense. Go and get the spray. Go and open the door for him. Open the door. He will know. Good to see you, my baby girl. Oh yeah, bring the chair. Bring the chair for Mr. Thompson. I'm okay. I said we don't hug in my country. Bring the chair. I know. I read my scriptures. Yes. But you know, I stopped by for two reasons. What brought you here? Because you were here earlier today to meet I friends. stopped up on Harlem to get some soul food. Okay. And then I was over on Hancock and I saw your son Femi with them thugs selling that Dutch. My son. Hands down the hip. Hey, hang us down right here. You are the elderly man. Why didn't you pull him to come back home? I'll be honest with you. I came back for another reason. Now, what happened? Where's your wife? You got about $13 on the bar. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Thompson. We got to stick together. It's Sunday now. Come on, man. It's Sunday now. Come on, be going home. You know, I, at your age, $13. But well, we supposed to be family. Can you not stay here now? You better go to social services. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let us go. 109 East 16th Street. I don't know. Please. 125th Street. Jamaica Avenue. Oh, my husband. You will soon be home. Ah. Shake, shake. It's good to see you, though. Bring this. No, you're not coming. Happy Sunday. It's good to see you, though. Everybody, thank you very much. Um, my name is Mudaku Wabike, and I am Uju. Hey, my name is Akuchi, and I play Shade, the last daughter. I'm Terry Omiso, and I play Mr. Charlie Thompson. So, just very quickly, so you have an idea. If you are on Instagram and Facebook, you'll be able to follow us for now. We do one-minute skits, and the purpose of Mama Shade. So, I started off by myself, 
playing my daughters, Funke and Shade, and even my husband, I will put the makeup on and everything. I played all those roles, but I've been for so long sitting on what is called Life with Mama Shade, and I wanted to bring that to life. And I put out just a little ad, here's some of my team, it's still a lot of us. But the purpose is to bring inclusiveness, to integrate, to have everybody come together. We Nigerians tend to think we are the best. Or do we are? We are. We are. But when I say that, I say this to say that I want us to be able to embrace other cultures. I want us to be able to learn from other cultures. Doing it through humor and also while spreading the gospel because I'm a lover of God. That's, that's, that's my man. That's my dude. Right so that's what you want to do. So Mr. Thompson is just one of the characters that you're getting to know. He's an African-American neighbor who's always coming by. He's that one neighbor that just has to you know, be in everybody's business, right? And of course, you got the firstborn who's married but doesn't really stay home because there's really a story <laughs> behind it, right? There's always something. So if you follow, you'll get to understand more. So please follow me at Mama Shade, that is Mama underscore Shade, that is on Instagram and also on Facebook. Where can they follow you? You can follow me also on Instagram. That's O M O underscore L A R A underscore. Uh, well, you can follow me on Instagram as well. That's d dot a k dot u. And you can follow Shadi on Instagram as well. Afro Div A F R O D Y P. Simple. You can follow me, Terry, but my Instagram is Music is Terry. That's T E R O Y. Music is Terry. Thank you guys. Thank you guys for so last. I appreciate you guys for this opportunity. Thank you. A round of applause for Mama Shadi and the all right, and I'm sure that uh, why I will tell you, yeah, Instagram handles on Mama Siasa. Who calls that underscore and underscore and dot, dot, dot? I'm not going to find you on the dot, dot, dot. Make it simple so that the mamas can follow you. It's not that hard to follow Jesus. It's just K-U-S-U-S. K-E-S-U-S, you follow Jesus. But if you want to follow him as Amon underscore Lara dot P dot underscore. As I'm all that. Guys, make it easy. Like mine. So easy. It's Shady underscore proud. Oh my god, I have underscore too. Jesus. <laughs> Let's give him a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Give him a round of applause. You know, irrespective of what your background is, we all have a story. You know, we all have a lifestyle. Whether you're from the islands, anywhere you're from on the island, whether you're from Africa. Jamaica's in the house, make some noise. I don't want the lights to be on when I call the Jamaicans, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> good night, I'll make some noise! Oh, yeah, that's a good minority right there now, man. Trinidad and Tobago! I see you from Haiti! Barbados! Okay, just three of you, okay? <laughs> Point five. <laughs> Point 0.5 is the baby. Say <laughs> good All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are going to have uh, a spotlight for one minute for one of our, one of our sponsors. You know, because without our sponsors, the show wouldn't be uh, a reality. So we'd like to show our position to our sponsors. So, ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for the one minute spotlight. Dress like a Christmas tree, I can see gifts. Bring me over. 
bring you all to this uh, house. Amen. Um, before I get any further, I know a lot of y'all probably on your phones taping and stuff like that on Snapchat, Instagram. Um, we just need to pray for um, social media because uh, social media is taking over, isn't it? Ain't it? Yeah. Social media is taking over. You know, I, I hope heaven got Wi-Fi for real. <laughs> but we on social media all the time, like, like heaven should have Wi-Fi, right? Because it got unlimited cloud space. <laughs> Terabyte right here. You know, heaven should have Wi-Fi because I know hell got a lot of hot spots. And you know, hey, we'll be worried about reception down there. You know, we'll be on Snapchat talking about hashtag burning. Social, like phones in general is just crazy. Like I, my, my mother-in-law, she she play Candy Crush. All the time. Like, Candy Crush came out like about five years ago. She's still playing it like it's new. <laughs> like, and Candy Crush, I know, is the trick of the enemy. I think the government made Candy Crush because you can't win. It's made for you not to win. Like, you ever try to play Candy Crush when it came out or any one of them games? You'd be like, you know what? I'm just going to go to the bathroom. I'm just going to play for a couple minutes and I'm going to do my thing and I'm going to And four hours later, you like this. <laughs> around and get virtual diabetes. <laughs> and then she got to go up to church and explain that. Imagine that testimony. Somebody with virtual diabetes, they be talking about, I've been playing Candy Crush my whole life. Come on, man. I lost my tips. From I lost my tips from Candy Crush. <laughs> Don't be like me. Don't be like me. Don't lose your tips. Don't lose your tips. Is there one? <laughs> don't lose. Hashtag don't lose your tips. Oh yeah, it gets better from here. Um, yeah, because I'm one of those people that went to church all the time. Like, all the time. Like how God is good all the time. I went to church all the time. I had no choice because the church was my house. <laughs> Before it was living hope, it was my living room. You know what I mean? And like the law, he, he brought in the, the, the congregation. The congregation was big now. My mother moved to a new building. My mom was actually my pastor. And, and <laughs> she had the nerve to ask like if there's any visitors. Like, no, my sister, it's just us. You know what I'm saying? Grandma came last week for coffee. <laughs> But we had to move into another building because the congregation was getting too big and it was hard for her to baptize people in the bathtub. You know what I'm saying? So, in the summertime, though, it was good because, you know, she was baptizing everybody in the sprinkler. <laughs> Come and get your plan. Come on, somebody. <laughs> it's weather crazy. We don't know where to be. Hot, cold, you don't know where to be. Ugg boots, basketball shorts, you don't know what to do. It's, it was so cold one day, this church baptism pool froze. <laughs> but you know us, you know we ain't gonna stop that because people gotta get closer to God, they man. They gotta get washed from their sins. They be sitting there, take me to the eyes, yeah. <laughs> People just laying on top of the pool, stuck in sin.
You ever pray for the Lord so hard you get a wedgie? You can't, you can't pull it. You can't pull it out because that's nasty. You got it, Mike. I found the trick. Anytime you, you in service, you get a wedgie. You gotta dance it out. You got Everybody from everywhere that will be entertaining you tonight. You guys ready for this? Yeah. Now, uh, what we are celebrating tonight uh, started with a vision that uh, you know God deposited on the inside of one individual. Now I decided to bring the team together and bring it to life. And this is just to tell anybody here, whatever you are, it's a dream. And you have just like Martin Luther King. I want you to know that your dream will only become a reality if you bring it out. And God blesses you with the right team. Somebody here tonight, this message is for you. you have that dream, and part off. <laughs> bring that dream to life. Right? Might be the dream of giving somebody money, I am that person. 
do not find the Holy Ghost. Release that money. It may be the car keys to your new Mercedes. If it's a Toyota, no, the Spirit doesn't talk about me. Anything from Mercedes upwards, the Spirit is talking about me. Hello? When I say hello, you say hi. Hello? Hello? All right, now I'm about to bring the CEO of Night of Gospel Live, the man that God gave the vision and the one who put all this together. Please, a round of applause for my brother, my friend, Benga Omotayo! A round of applause for Benga! Let me give him a microphone. Yeah, some of you call him Gibenga, some of you call him Benga, some of you call him G. All right, that's all right. Benga. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, this is a CEO, this is a dude. I got to get the vision. So, um, just a quick question, you know, just to while away our time uh, before we go into the next item. So, um, tell us, how did this uh, idea come up? What were you doing? Did you just finish eating and uh, you felt so happy? Or uh, you just paid, or was it, you know, because some ideas came out of hunger. Are <laughs> you hungry? So how did it start? You know, just tell us. It was you... actually um, out of trying to solve a problem. Okay. So on the first path, it was the year that there was a problem in Haiti. That was in 2010, I believe. So it... 18, the house makes some noise! I don't remember that year that Andy had a problem, I think that was, um, was major. Okay. So a group of us came together, we said we were going to do like a concert, you know? Just to help that country of Haiti. Along the line of planning that concert, everything turned to comedy. I don't even know how that happened, but what I could remember immediately was, I wanted to bring to, because I came from the UK, you know? And I went UK, to, anybody from the UK? Everybody here, everybody in London? UK? Okay, because I was born and raised in UK, okay? I don't care if you doubt me or not, I live in UK. Whatever. Go ahead, brother. So, I, I noticed that in the terrain that I worked, we had a Brooklyn yard. There was little alternative forms of entertainment for people of faith, clean, you know, comedy, clean, entertainment, wholesome, family oriented, event that you can go with your family without being, you know, uh, you go to some events and you're in Iran. You're in Iran by the quality and the content that is being dished out. So I Infinities and cost words. And it, yeah, so and you don't want your children to learn from. Yeah. Because what you're taking is what you manifest, right? Yeah. So that was the driving force. So it wasn't like we just wanted to do comedy like comedy. We just wanted to bring into the atmosphere clean entertainment. Our people can so the vision was this. Can we give God you know You know. And how has the journey been so far? Um, this is the ninth edition, love y'all. Uh, ninth edition, come on. Uh, oh, ninth year, eighth edition, okay. Uh, we, can, we can climb for that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can tell you, I can tell you that it's, it's not been an easy journey. Yeah. But we got all things that are possible. So for me, success is not de defined by the amount of your material wealth or what you've been able to accumulate from your work or from whatever. For me, you know, success is really you being able to cut a vision and being able to plan the vision and you see the vision manifest. And also going beyond that, having that vision, being able to put money in your pocket. Yeah. For me, that is success. Because I do not just want to wake up one day and realize that regret has taken the place of my dreams. Y'all hear that? Y'all heard that? And I heard you guys saying, uh, I heard you were speaking earlier on. So truly, truly, we all, we all have greatness inside of us. And my greatness is not your greatness. 
And so if my journey is different from your journey, there's really no competition. Amen. And that's just the truth about it. And so we live in a system where it's so, it's near impossible to do things like this. I can tell you that. I am a, I'm a business consultant, I'm an entrepreneur. I talk to people every day. People have dreams and visions and ideas they would like to run with. But the challenge is, it's, it's, you got to pay the price. It's a lot of price to pay. But the question is, is it worth You can't pay the price, you can't pay your bills. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so, you know, it's been, so back to your question. It's been mixed feelings, but no regrets. I'm going to tell you on this platform, we have one of the comedians coming. I, I'm not shy to say he came in, you know, he was one of our youth, you know, and he came in. His friend said he loved to do comedy. And we gave him the platform to the glory of God. He rose to become the McDonald's uh, Gospel Comedian of the Year. Give a round of applause. Free McDonald's for one year. That means <laughs> On this same platform, we've had people come. They were all broken and dejected, and true lives and true people using their life story to, to make people laugh and the encouragement and inspirations. Please turn around for that. On this same platform, we've had people rose up and they said, I would like to give my life to Jesus. Hallelujah. So for me, those are the successes I see. And, you know, one thing I'm also going to say is sometimes when God gives a vision, sometimes you don't see the entire picture. It's like on a need to know basis. Right now, I know you're going to ask me what's coming next. Yes, that's what I was about. That's so what's right next. Now. So, so sometimes you just see a little bit of it, but it begins to manifest and begin to see the future clearly. And so for us, this is just the beginning, really. It took me you know, quite a lot of time to figure it out. But I think we're ready to move on out there and just take the bulls by the horns and just do things on a bigger scale. And you know, I mean, it wouldn't have been possible without people like yourself. And I'd like you to appreciate yourself. Round of applause, yeah, everybody. Round of applause. Yes, in spite of the rain, yes. you know, came out. Yes, and um, we appreciate you because yes. without you, there'll be no us. You know, like you yes. said, the us yes. is like the Grammys yes. and all the awards. You know what I'm saying? Without your brain, no us. And also, if you're here and you know someone who knows someone who knows someone who can sponsor, please talk to them because we want to take it to the national stadium. Oh no. My sister got it. Sorry, I was oh, thinking yeah. I was in Nigeria. <laughs> My sister got it. You stayed there where I come from. We have more questions. I can just freestyle. Okay, all right. On this note, I'll give you 60 seconds to freestyle. Okay. Because we're we, we, we we paying for time. This. Uh, I remember in 2010 when we started, this woman came. She sat right. She was the first to come in to the auditorium in 2010. I remember. She sat right in front because we had it at my church, and she was sitting right in front with her camera. <laughs> Some of the videos that you guys watched, she taped the video. And if you follow us on social media, you can't tell me you don't know her. Apostle Eloise. Every single round of applause for Apostle Eloise, because I saw her tonight again. Come on, give her a round of applause. All you need is a hundred of items in your life and you become a multi-billionaire. And so, can you all just help me? Appreciate her Please. because let's, let's, this let's. is the final. Don't cry, but she's living. She's living in New York, so this will be the final edition of Night of Girls Collab. She'll be attending, and for that, we truly, truly appreciate. Uh, okay, all right. In as much as you say that, I believe that this time, like this time next, I will have a private jet. I'll fly from wherever you are. Please, a round of applause. Appreciate that. everybody. Else. Come on, come on. So much, we appreciate you. God bless you. God will be with you and your ministry. Also, it's 
It's very important when God gives you an assignment and a vision for you to support. I'm seeking my remnant of worldwide ministries, but I'm known as SMR for our media production. And I've been doing this since 2007. And God would send me certain people's names. Like he, he has came on a social media site, and God said, help him. And that was it. Most of my videos were churches and other things I've done. God said, help them. And that's it. And as I stepped back and looked at a lot of the videos today, and over the years since 2007, I've been busy and I didn't even know it. But Montana is going to be my new state Man. because they have so many social issues that have to be recorded and exposed. So whenever God tells you to help somebody, just do it. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Uh, so, also, uh, I know you are all great people. I appreciate Thank you and you all know. Many of you are here today because you know me and you felt like you want to be part of what I do. So I'm not going to be able to mention all of your names. However, today is a special day for some people. Today is the birthday of our brother, Stephen Bedroom. Stephen, can you rise to your feet? Because after this, everyone is coming to your house for okay. cake. And I have a full house tonight. And also, I have a family friend, a pastor friend, a brother, a sister, a family very supportive. And I just love the dynamics of this our couple. They're both pastors, they're both doctors. They're into the Ministry of Helping Marriages. They have retreats every year. And they're taking starting an island, island for God. They have, this, they have this starting island breakthrough summit. And I just want to appreciate, especially Pastor Henry Emmanuel, because today happens to be his birthday as well. Oh. Pastor, rise up, rise up. I know you're not afraid if Jesus can feed 5,000 with five loaves of bread and two feet. You will feed us today. I'm on the way today. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. And especially to Pastor Lara because the church actually had a plan for today, but she had to move things around. And I told her I would like her to come. She had to move things around all the way. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm not going to take. I'm not going to take too much of your time. I want to appreciate my family, my wife, for seeing me. You guys know I have four kids, right? And you see me doing all this by myself because my wife is there helping me with the home front. I truly appreciate my wife and my wife. all the team that made it happen. When you see anyone with a Nato Gospel Out T-shirt, please let me give them a hug. Thanks for the team to bring the good work. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. And finally, to our sponsor of this event, Wave App. If you are a Nigerian here and you're still sending money through Western Union MoneyGram, you're missing it because these guys. It's so cumbersome. It's just with your phone or just an app, you download your app. And it's free, they're not charging you. No charge. People ask, how do they do? Where do they make money? If you know the. The Lord provides. <laughs> The story of the guys who started it, we don't understand why they decided to make it free. Yeah, I use Wave too because you know you got family members calling you all the time. You have to go to Western Union, you know, but right now your phone is directly into their bank account. No third party, no service fees, no charge fees. What can be better than that? Come on, man. Let's win it. I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave. I just wanna say for people who have in bringing people and access to Charlene. She brought about 30 people here tonight. All people. <laughs> also, now, I'm in trouble because I forgot the name. Um, you know, you can you wave your hand? Let me see you. You know, it has you here. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. She came to our show once, and since that time she's been booked. She brought over 30 people. Wow, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, New York. I appreciate you all. I appreciate you all. God bless you. And thank Round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you.
to Pastor Williams for coming tonight. We appreciate your money. Thank you. God bless you, New York. Thank you. God bless you, New York. We'll see you Thank next you. time. Thank you, Shane. All right. Now, ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for Bega. Bega. You know what, I'm so, um, I'm so proud of him that, uh, you know, in appreciating everybody, he don't forget to mention his wife, you know, because a lot of, you know, uh, African men or men of, you know, black people, we tend to just, you know, take, you know, you're with the man and keep forgetting that, you know, our wives. So please, a round of applause to him and for his beautiful wife, you know, because I am straight up from Nigeria where, you know, the man is the head and the neck and everything, right? But you see, when you leave Nigeria and land in America, you learn one very vital lesson. That women are in... Control. Oh no, you guys are not saying it. What, what women, women are in what? I, I need to hear that like, so women are in... If I had any doubt, my first weekend in America, the pastor said, if you're here, you're a man and you're in charge of your house. I need you to rise up. To my surprise, no man stood up. I'm like, what is going on in this church? And to further amaze me, only one man stood up. He was the shortest man in the church. I'm like, wow, this is the only man in charge of his, his house? And pastor said, Mr. Oko, you are the only one here in charge of your house? He said, actually, my wife told me to stand up. So whichever way you like it, women are still in. Women are in charge in this part of the world. I didn't know that. I learned my lesson quickly. So that's why that brother has to say to my wife, yes. I do not want to sleep on the couch tonight. Yes, my wife. We think it's a lie here. All our daddies here tonight know that you know when they get home, they take the suit off and get in the kitchen and have to do the dishes. We don't do that in Africa. No, we don't. Like when I got here, anytime I'm doing the dishes and my mom calls, say, What are you doing? I'm like, I'm watching the TV. <laughs> say, what is that noise? I'm like, it is the TV. <laughs> Where is your wife? Oh, I have commanded her to wash the dishes. Whatever you do, your house is your business. Everybody not need to know what I'm doing. Right. Okay. Are we ready? Are we ready for the next comedian? Well, you know what? Ladies and gentlemen, get ready, get ready, get ready. Talk to your neighbor. Say, neighbor. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Because we're calling our main comedian, our like our main act tonight. I'm sure some of you have seen him all over YouTube or on TV. He's been to all the mega churches. He's been to the mega fest with Pastor T.D. Jakes. He's been to all the mega churches. He's been to Europe. He's been to Africa. He's been to Australia. And tonight, we have brought him here. Ladies and gentlemen, with love in your heart and with a heart of appreciation, I want you to rise to your feet as we start from Audrey Blue. Good evening, everybody doing good? Yeah. yeah, I know you guys have been having a wonderful time, but because I've been listening to your lab. Touch your neighbor right now and tell your neighbor, say neighbor. Yeah. Come on, I need you to say it with some life. Come on, say neighbor. Yeah. Come on, say it like your black Baptist preacher, say neighbor. Yeah. Say, don't touch me no more. Go ahead. Because see, we, we, we be in church and uh, everybody be touching, you know, every time. If I had to say, touch your neighbor and tell them this. Touch your neighbor and tell them, you ever been in church and you try to touch somebody and they move away from you? Uh, I'm like saying, listen, the only reason why I was going to touch you is because the pastor said so. Trust me, I didn't even want to sit by you. If I saw a pretty girl over there, I wanted to sit next to you. They made me sit next to you. I don't like that. I'm glad to be here all the way from Los Angeles, California. Make some noise for Los Angeles, New York. Glad to be here. I had some uh, chicken and rice. Uh, there was a name they gave me for it. Uh, what do you call the chicken and rice? Jalou. Jalou. Say it down. Jalou. Yeah, whatever y'all say. It was. It was good. I was crying because the rice was a little spicy. Uh, but it was good. I wanted to have that experience. Uh, I grew up in Compton, California. Anybody ever heard of Compton? Straight out of Compton, the movie. I actually lived there. I lived uh, just a little ways away from Ice Cube and Dr. Dre. It's so funny. I didn't know they were going to grow up and blow up 
Uh, but we all grew up in the same neighborhood, and uh, but I didn't worry about it. I, I didn't get involved in gangs and drugs, not because of the police, but I had parents uh -huh, that had a strong whipping ministry. They really did. You know, now you can't whoop your kids, you'll go to jail. Uh, but that wouldn't have made no difference to my parents. My parents always wanted, they used to pray for a prison ministry. And so they were just waiting on us to act up so that they could fulfill their dream. <laughs> Man, we got whippings all the time. Every time we had a meal, we got a whooping. We had our breakfast, we got a whipping. We had our lunch, we got another whipping. We had our dinner, we got another whipping. We didn't want no snacks. <laughs> But that was another whipping. We started fasting at age four. And my mother used to talk to me before she'd give me the whooping. Uh, she said, uh, you know, this gonna hurt me. What did they hurt you? Yeah, why well, we never saw her crying. I never saw my mama crying. She was doing all the whooping. Then she used to tell me, she would say, I'm doing this because I love you. Yeah. Now, now I'm about to tell y'all now, I didn't say this to her out loud. But I thought it. I said to myself, give me that bill. <laughs> Let me whoop you. I, I love you too. And you have to understand, I'm a third generation Negro, Black, Baptist, African colored people's preacher. Which simply means my grandfather was a preacher from the Baptist church, my father's a preacher from the Baptist church, and I've been preaching since I was 18 years old. Listen, I'm not just talking about preaching hallelujah, the Lord is good. No, 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 no. In the, the Negro, Black, Baptist, African colored people's church from the hood, the preacher would get up uh, and he was sound like uh, I'm sounding right now. Uh, he had the church going. He be preaching uh, and sounding like uh, he having an asthma attack at the same time. And then the preacher, he would lie to us too. He would lie to us. He'd be preaching. He'd like, mm. he look at his watch and he'd tell this lie. He'd I'm getting ready to close. <laughs> then 15 minutes later, he's like, I'm getting ready to close. Three days later, he still be getting ready to close. Y'all seen preachers like that? They just want to buy a little bit more time so the offering can be bigger. That's, that's type of home I grew up in. My, my father used to be whooping me. He still think he was preaching. He, I don't do something right. He said, come here, boy. It's time for your whipping. He pulled that bell off and he be preaching. He said, did I tell you ha, to empty the trash? Ha, did I tell you to clean up the room? Did I tell you? Yo, I'm telling y'all, I, I got saved that day. I was changed because I didn't, I didn't want no whippings, but I thank God for whip. Give it up for all the parents that whip their children. The Bible said, if you spare the rod, you'll spoil the child. The Bible said, if you beat your child, he will not die. You may go to jail, but the child will not die. I'm so, brave. I'm so glad all of you guys are here tonight uh, in good spirits. Um, I appreciate you greatly for being here. It's a long day. I've been trying since 4.30 this morning to get to New York. I had a show last night in Flint, Michigan. That's why I didn't get dressed. I, this is what I really wanted to wear, but the Lord is humbling me. He won't let me wear what I thought I was going to wear to show out. So I could just wear what I did uh, from the airport. Uh, but I am grateful. I, uh, I wish I had a musician here on tonight, but I'm just going to do it without the musician. I like to flow in the pathetic. Uh, I know some of y'all know the word is prophetic, but, but see the pathetic, you, you ever been in church and somebody try to act like they're real deep, like they really know the Lord, but they don't really know the Lord, they just like to seem deep, like uh, they'll come with a pathetic word, they'll, they'll, I'm going to give you an example of what they'll do, what's your name? Who? That is correct. Lift your hands and receive that. <laughs> and act like they have a word from the Lord. And then, you know what I really hate? I hate when people act like they have a word from the Lord. They get the music playing. And everybody be going 
in the tongues and everything, and then they end up telling you something you already know. Not only the adults, the little kids already know. They be like, hallelujah, glory, glory, glory. And then they said, the Lord just dropped this in my spirit. He told me to tell everybody in this room, hallelujah, that tomorrow is Monday. Don't. Some of y'all, they were like, I don't know. <laughs> and I always wanted to speak in tongues, but I didn't know how. So I just made up my own tongue. I would, I would go to church. I go to Church of God in Christ, my Baptist boy. And uh, they started speaking in tongues. I made up my own tongue. Now, the way I started was a tongue that I was familiar with. My name is Broderick. Start with the letter B. So that's where I start speaking in tongues. They go into tongues forever. And I'd be like, hey, blah, 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 blah. Because I'm going to defend it with everybody else. And then I added another letter to it that I thought sounded deep. I put an E in front of the B. I said E. Ba -ba -ba. I thought I was in the spirit. I was just, I was just going with what I knew. And then I got even better at it. I created tongues based upon whatever I wanted for. Like if I was hungry, I created a hungry tongue. I'd be in church, I'd say, hey, burrito. If I wanted a new place to live, but I wasn't ready to buy a house, I just didn't need a temporary place to live, I just lifted my head and said, eat condo. <laughs> and then if I wanted a girlfriend, I just, I go come up with a girlfriend talk, I said, hey, run the shot of the eat <laughs> addiction. I was addicted and uh, I didn't know how to get set free. Uh, I had struggled with an addiction to uh, white snow covered honey buns. It's like a donut and, uh, and uh, it, it had me bound. I didn't know how to get free of the white honey buns. Even when I wasn't thinking about the honey bun, the devil would attack me. Uh, Sometimes I get ready to go get gas at the gas station. I go inside to pay for the gas. And it'd be three white snow-covered honey buns up there by the cash register on sale for a dollar piece. And uh, it was three of them. And I knew the Lord wanted me to have them because it was three. And one for the Father, one for the Son, one for the Holy Ghost. Say it! Yeah. Uh, so I, uh, I took the three honey buns home because I had to have the Trinity. And, uh, I took them home and I began to play mental mind games with myself. I told myself, I ain't gonna eat all these honey buns on tonight. I said, I'm gonna eat them over the next several weeks as a treat to myself for achieving certain goals. But you know, in the middle of the night, the devil took advantage of me. While I was weak and vulnerable. And then he even brought scripture to me. I was just going to eat one honey bun. But the devil brought the scripture to me that said, two are better than one. And a three-fold cord is not even broken. So I ended up eating all three of the honey buns in Trinity in one night. But I want to let you know that there's a way you ought to eat a honey bun. See, uh, I'm going to preach it like a Negro, Black, Baptist, African, colored people preacher. Uh, you should 
just open up and start eating. The honey bun. Act like we're in church. Come on, y'all. I said, uh, uh -huh. you shouldn't just open up the honey bun and start eating. Uh -huh. What you need to do uh -huh, is take them honey buns uh, and put them in the microwave for about 10 to 13 seconds. Continue to eat the honey buns. I noticed that uh, the devil began to pack weight on my body. I, I began to grow in Christ. Somebody told me when I was a little kid, they told me as a little kid, they said, One day, son, you're going to be big in ministry. Tell somebody, say, And it came to pass. When you gain a little weight, people feel like they have a right to come up and tell you you gaining weight. I'm talking about people that's even bigger than you will tell you that you gaining weight. And I didn't want to say nothing mean in response, so I cried unto the Lord. I said, I cried out unto him, and the Lord spake unto me a resolution. I told y'all people be in church making up words. And the thing is, you can't say nothing because sometimes you say, hmm, maybe it is a word and I just don't know. Maybe it's a rhema word that the Lord just, just gave them. And so what the Lord told him, he's, the Lord told me, he said, don't be mad, don't say nothing mean, don't say a cuss word uh, in church. Uh, he said, <laughs> don't, don't, don't act like y'all don't know. Y'all don't be speaking in tongues all day. Hallelujah. But um, the Lord said, don't say nothing to me. He said, just let them know the next time they come up and talk to you about anything they see, just let them know that this is not weight. He said, tell them, uh -huh, this uh, is increase. He said, tell them, this uh, is abundance. He said, tell them, this uh, is overflow. Tell them, the Lord is adding to my territory because it's my season. He said to tell them uh, out of my what? Belly. To blow the river of a living water. Find somebody that's skinny and say, you need a belly. You need a belly. It's a big belly, much power. Little belly, little power. So I had to get ready to close, but you know what? I brought some product tonight, and um, uh, I'm gonna grab it out the bag. I don't want to scare nobody, but I brought some product. How many of y'all would love to get some product to laugh at tonight? Okay, I need you to get back loud. <laughs> The product, I got some DVDs. I've been fortunate to go on TVN, BET, The Word, Network, CBS, perform with some of the biggest names in Hollywood and Hollywood. I'm grateful for that, but I'm really grateful to be here in New York City. Look, am I in Brooklyn tonight? Look, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. I have some DVDs. They're normally $20 a piece. The CD is normally $15 a piece. But tonight, if you get either one of these DVDs, you get the CD free. Now I'm aware that maybe aware you can't use cash. Uh, so for those of you who have the cash app, the cash app, my cash app information is dollar sign Broderick Rice. That's dollar sign Broderick Rice. Or you can go to my PayPal page. You can go there at www.paypal.me forward slash Broderick E. Rice. Or you can meet me out at the table, bring your app with you once you've proven that you have paid. <laughs> Then you will get the product. I appreciate your support. Listen, listen, I don't want to go home with any of this product on tonight, so I'm going to ask you guys to support me greatly. Y'all going to try to do that? Listen, I got my Benny Hinn, my Bernie Mac, my Marvin Winers, my T.D. Chase. Y'all know any of them? Yeah. Make some noise if you know them. I'll give my 
them on these DVDs. So make sure you go out talking about my whippings. I even got a piece on here about holy, holy weaves. And, uh, and so I know the sisters don't like that sometimes, but it's okay. Nothing wrong with a weed. Listen, look at somebody say, ain't nothing wrong with a weed. You just got to make sure the weed don't backslide. You got to keep that weed saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. That's all you got to do. I, you know, I feel like I should just, I feel like I should give something away. There you go. Come on, give her a round of applause, y'all. And just because this lady has on this beautiful, beautiful hat over here, we gonna, we gonna give her, come on, show love. Give something to somebody over here. We'll need some impressions in a minute. I gotta find somebody, who am I gonna give to? Who want it? Oh, okay, I, I, I saw her hand extended in faith, so I had to do that. Do I have enough time to do some impressions? Do I have enough time to do some impressions? Yes, yes. Can, can I do some impressions? Yes. Let, let me hurry up and do those impressions, then I'm gonna get on out the way, because there may be other people coming on, and I'm gonna be glad to go to sleep tonight. It's been a long night, but it's been worth it. You guys are a wonderful crowd. I appreciate you so much. I can't even pronounce the name of the gentleman who invited me. What's what's the guy's name who paid? Who paid? Me, um, Banda? Yeah. Give it up for Brother Banda. Brother Banda. Brother Banda pay the bills, get the airline, the hotel, and all of that. Let me go ahead and do these impressions for the DJ uh, have me off of the stage. I'm, I'm so grateful. The Bible says in Proverbs 18.60, your gift will make room for you and bring you all the way to Brooklyn. Come on, make some noise. Come on. And I'm so grateful. You know I had a chance. Y'all know Marvin Winans? Yeah. Clap your hands if you love Marvin Winans. Marvin Winans, I had a chance to have dinner with him just a couple of years ago. I love him. I love to hear him sing because when he sings, he can make anything sound good. He can sing nursery rhymes. You can be filled with the spirit. Rora, Royaba, gently down the stream. Oh, oh, oh. He can sing anything. A, B, C, impression that I forget who I really am. But it works to my benefit. Sometimes a bill collector will call. They'll be like, is Broderick there? I answer like Marvin one. I'm like, oh, oh no. Oh, 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 oh. Y'all pray for me, y'all. Another one of my favorite, y'all, is Pastor Benny Hinn. Clap your hand if you like Benny Hinn. I like Benny Hinn because he has an accent. Precious dear people. Hallelujah, hallelujah, lift your hands, hallelujah. And then I love when his announcers start announcing the miracles. Pastor Benny, this lady says she's been sitting here for three days. She said when she first got here, she had a situation in her stomach, could not pass gas at all. While you were praying, she felt something rip out of her. And now she, hallelujah, hallelujah. Can I do T.D. Jakes real quick? I had a chance to meet T.D. Jakes and he had me come and perform at Mega Fest up on Our Woman Got Art Loose. A wonderful experience and he's such a nice man. Uh, I appreciate him. He's kind of shy if you talk to him one on one, believe it or not. And then T.D. Jakes, I love the fact he don't beg for money. When he come on this TV show, he just be calm. Whenever he need money, he just put out a movie or a book. <laughs> He don't have to be in for it on TV. But I love when he first come on this TV program, he's so calm, he has soft music playing, like all the bills is paid. And now he comes, he's like, listen, I'm so excited that you're joking the 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 And that's when he started preaching real strong. He said, listen, baby, if you ever get in trouble, God will come into your situation. He will kick down the door. He will kick down the door.
told you all that tonight is going to be different. And let me tell you something, we still, we still have two more comedians in the house. And it's not just comedy tonight, we got music too. And let me tell you something, everything you hear in the humor is to pass a message to someone. Because I said it to that any time, I noticed that in America, any time I tune on the TV, four out of ten commercials is about weight loss. One in the getting nutrient system, this and that about weight loss. I want to let you know tonight that there's a word for someone in the house. That weight loss is not for everybody. Especially if you're a woman of color. Because God has created us in a special way. Even science describes us as matter. Anything that has weight and occupies space. Talk to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I am a matter. I have weight and I occupy space. Somebody. Because you see, sometimes what you see on TV can make you feel short about what God has created you to be. And I don't care if the neighbor next to you has Peruvian, Himalayan, or Malaysian hair, and you have your natural Afro hair. Tell them, neighbor, I am still somebody. Your neighbor might be wearing Gucci, Prada, Louis Vuitton, and you're wearing something from Payless or Ross. Tell them, neighbor. I am still somebody. Your neighbor probably came here in a Mercedes, in a, in a, in a Rolls Royce, Bugatti, Ferrari, Lamborghini, and you came in a Uber. But you came, neighbor, I am still somebody. Glory to God. Don't make anybody make you feel inferior about yourself. You're beautiful the way you are. Some men are tall, dark, and handsome, and some are short, round, and manageable. Whatever <laughs> way you are, you're still beautiful. Some men Packs, and we know some of our daddy have amusement parks. The neighbor say you are still somebody. Amen. And if you have an amusement park and people are telling you your stomach is too big, tell them that the Bible says out of your belly flows rivers of living water. Love it in. Glory to God. Let's give a lot of big air. Right now, tonight is not just about comedy, we got music too, and because Christmas is a season to celebrate our Lord and Savior Jesus, we have music that will entertain you tonight. So ladies and gentlemen, give it up for the New York uh, Sisters of Bells, New York Sisters of Bells. Give them a round of applause. I got you. New York Bell Sisters, Sisters Bells of New York. I don't want a lot for Christmas. There is just one thing I need. I don't care about the present underneath the Christmas tree. I just want you on my own. More than you could. 
originals. So. <laughs> we have one more for you. Thank you so much again for having us to this amazing event. Uh, we are the New York Bells. You guys are going to need to strobe for us, I think. Lights out. Do it. Yeah, we like that. Yes, that's a spirit. Yeah.
on tonight. Yeah. It's been a very interesting day. All right. Um, all right. Christmas season. So tonight, Christmas song. Let me clap one more time. Let me make some noise tonight. For a while, so we know all the songs, and so we're just going to sing together. Are you ready tonight? Yeah. Are you ready tonight? Yeah. Are you ready tonight? Yeah. Come on, scream one more time. Come on. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh,
you know, God has really blessed me this year, so I feel like giving back, you know. So now the condition is, uh, you follow me on my Instagram. Everybody? So for uh, people that have Instagram. Oh. Uh, and the first person to follow me gets uh, a brand new. M-O-N-A-D-E, the first location I get received this day. Oh, wow. The first notification I get going. Oh, wow. The team. Wow. Okay, now I'll go. The very first. She unfollowed me to the follow me. Anyway, it's okay. Um, I know you, I know you. That's Joy. Yeah, she tied on the real life and even on social media. Nigerian queen, come and receive your brand new. Yeah, yeah, she wants to join, 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 join. Yeah, yeah, give joy a round of applause, please. Yeah, have a brand new iPhone. Yeah, um, wait, 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 wait. A brand new iPhone charger. Take it. All right. They're a couple, and they, they, they were training, and the guy was, um, he was planking and had the lady on his back. I'm sure some of you have seen that video. And he was doing his push-up, you know, up to like 50 and stuff. And she sent me that and said, hashtag relationship goes. I said, which would? <laughs> because I don't know if you guys can really see me. I weigh maybe roughly like 72 pounds. <laughs> And this guy is 72 pounds over, you know, rest of the power of four. No, I'm just saying, it's okay. Wherever you are, be comfortable in your skin. But if you're gonna tell me our relationship goal is for me to plank and you sit on me, my sister, get it behind me. You know, and, 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 and I saw his story. You know, especially this went viral when um, um, Ford was talking about our. Uh, um, had to be, you know, got engaged and got married to Offset. First of all, any man that his name is Offset, you should know from the onset that that is disaster. I'm just saying. So now, 
Now they broke up and then she went on Instagram again, Instagram, the devil, and she said, oh, uh, I know, um, I just want to say, you know, our relationship has not been a problem, not for some time, a long time now, and there are still some ladies out there, they are still claiming relationship go, relationship go, with these people, and then, because all offset cheated on her, yeah, he cheated on her, and the lady, when they interviewed the lady, you know what the lady said? They said, um, I just want to apologize, you know, I didn't know their, their, their marriage was serious. <laughs> I'm serious, I'm serious. She said she cheated with him because she didn't think their marriage. And for this reason, this one will marry, this man will marry this woman. They shall become one. And now she's saying she didn't think that is serious. And what did Offset say in the response? You're one. Yeah, that was his response. You're one. Yeah, like you win. Every, the world, you win. Whatever you think about me, I think it. You're one. That's it. Nothing more. Marriage, end. No, I want you to sink before I go to my point. Sorry, I cheated on you, that's bad. You just said you're one. If you think I'm a bad guy, you win. Now, I'm African, I, I'm sure because of my uh, Brooklyn accent, you all might not know, know what I'm saying? But I'm, I'm Nigerian. You know, and um, the first thing you don't want to do is cheat on a Nigerian woman. Because it will not end as your one. <laughs> that day, everyone will receive a visitor. And it is not the lady, it is the guy. Because you see, in, in America, you know, especially, you know, they'll be like, oh my god, no, John, it's, the problem is not you, it's the lady. Nigerian ladies, they don't have problems. It is always the guy. <laughs> It is always the guy. Now, take for instance, I remember when um, Kobe Bryant cheated on his wife Vanessa, and you know, was, at that time I was in a relationship, and I was watching it on the news, and my, my, my then girlfriend asked me a question like, would you cheat on me? And I said, no, I won't, I won't think about it. And she said, why? Women, please, I'm <laughs> I will give you answer. Let it end. Don't tiptoe into further questions. She says, why? I said, because you, you, you know, I love you and I wouldn't think so. I said, why? Why? I said, because you complete me and you compliment me. Right? You will end it there. Not Nigerian ladies. Why? He said, I mean, you complete me, you know, I work at McDonald's, you're my manager. It, can, it doesn't get better than that. Anyway, that's how I got fired at that job. And I lost her also. But, but I do not care about that. Now, Kobe Bryant cheated on Vanessa and apologize the four million dollar ring. I'm not making this up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, some ladies are like, oh my God, you only have a with pork fried rice. No, <laughs> Four million dollar ring. It's, it's on the news, go check the tablet. Now he apologized, and I could imagine I went down like, um, you know, this is uh, Vanessa CD, and, and he's like, oh baby, I just want to apologize to you. Like, I'm, I'm so sorry, and um, to show that I'm really sorry, here is a ring of four million dollars. And um, she accepted it, and since then, Kobe never cheated. Or oh, we haven't caught him yet. <laughs> Did they caught him? Did they caught him? <laughs> now, Vanessa was seated while Kobe was apologizing to her and stuff. Um, you know there's trouble when African ladies do not sit when you are having a, convers a serious conversation. But there's only one position an African lady will be standing 
and the next thing is hey. <laughs> Listen, right. for, for African American, if you ever see people having a conversation, a man and a woman, and the woman happened to be in this position, and be like, oh, yeah. and like this, my brother, call 911. <laughs> So she goes, oh, a homie. And you know, there's something about self entitlement with Nigerians. We always like me, me, a me, a me. So it's like, you know me, you. You go ask about me. And I'm like, please, who are you? You son of God. Now she starts shaking. Oh, a homie, a homie. It's like, baby, I'm so. Dude, dog. What are you catching? I don't like. Talk to the ends, like, like, talk to the ends, duh. It's all this thing, yeah. You teach them of me. I'm like, baby, I'm sorry. I said, you know what? I'm leaving this out. Then she start packing. I love you. I'm leaving. It's over. And, she, and the guy says, baby, I just want to apologize with four million dollars. And she's packing. I'm leaving this. <laughs> she has to flip her wing because it's covering. <laughs> Again, any woman that stands like this, men run away, she's like, she's like, what did you say? Like, Again, any woman that stands like this, men run away, she's like, she's like, what did you say? It's like, baby, I'm apologizing with four million dollars in. She said, baby, bring your hand, let's pray. Let us pray. The devil has entered this house. We will stop the devil out of this house. Nigerian women, well, well, they're different, they're different, and um, I went to the church, my mom said Simon needs to get married, and I said, okay, I'll go to the church, uh, because it's cost effective, and uh, <laughs> so I went to the church, and then I found this lady, and I was like, oh my gosh, she's so pretty, everything on fleek, uh, I, I even was late, you know, makeup on fleek, and then, where's she now on fleek? And if you use waist trainer, there's no problem. But how did I know she had waist trainer? Because when she sat down and I said, Sister, what's your name? She's like, <laughs> <laughs> So me, I was looking for CPR kids, like, <laughs> my, name, my name is Blessing. I said, You have that waist trainer on, Abby. And listen, some ladies here are not smiling right now. It's not because this joke is not funny. You have the waist trainer on. Simon, are you saved? He did, like this. I said, yes, I'm saved. I speak in tongues. I read my Bible. You know, I, I, I come to church. It's like, duh. I mean, bigger money in your savings account. <laughs> but you know, it's, uh, it's uh, the festive period that please us and he let us be safe as we travel and also they're talking about motivation. You know, and unfortunately, it's, it's, it's sad. And like people that live in Long Island, they want advice, they're like, maybe, you know, have your light on, you know, even when you travel on vacation, so people will think you are home. So that they won't invade your house. In Nigeria, for them to invade your house, you have to be at home. Because it's an interactive session. They need your presence, your cooperation. Because when, when armed robbers come to your house, the very first question they ask you, Ooh, everybody, lie down. And they ask you this fundamental. If they don't ask you, they are not professional robbers. Don't answer them. They might be carrying AK 47, ignore them. But when they bust into your boo, everybody, lie down. Your money are your. Your money are your. You can see the victim of sacrifice. One minute more, one minute more. As they bust into our house, and then they're like, Ooh, everybody, lie down. Your money or your life. My dad said, is this life? <laughs> is this life? The robber 
say, calm down. We have come to rob you. Say, I know, and so what? <laughs> and so what? Say, okay, you know what? Just take us to your bedroom and give us the money. My dad said, you are standing there. <laughs> the man said, where is your living room? I'm there already. <laughs> No money to give them. My daddy called him, but please, before you give, I don't know if you can give us that and more, uh, offering because we'll soon start our morning devotion and you just open our door and we can fix it. But African parents are beating, though. No matter how old you are, I remember I was coming to the state and I felt like, oh, I'm a big boy now, you know, I can do anything. And as I was leaving, my family. Like my whole community came to the airport to see me off. Yeah, it's a major thing that was traveling out. So as I was leaving, and my dad called me back. And as I went back to him, he gave me this awesome bah! I said, Dad, what's that for? He said, My son, as you are leaving, remember the son of whom you have and make sure you come back home. I said, I'm not going back to the way you used to be because your presence came and changed me. This is all in our comedian. The comedian is the best of all. All right. Um, let me tell you. We still have one more comedian, and guess what? Roger Rice is coming back. Ten more minutes. So, uh, in case you are planning to leave, uh, you better enjoy your money. Okay. All right. Quick announcement before uh, we go into the next act. Number one, uh, we have a food vendor who has a, a takeaway pack, and we want to assume that uh, the laughter has made you hungry. So we command you in the name of the Lord to go over there, take a pack, and pay. It's not for free, it's for $12 only, but they have assorted Nigerian delicacies that you're gonna enjoy for those of you who have heard about it. Please make sure you patronize that she's been there for over an hour waiting for someone to come patronize and make sure that you go there and patronize there too. Um, we have a, what you call it, um, a questionnaire. So they're going to be passing it around. You'll see some beautiful ladies in Night of Gospel Lab t-shirts. Uh, they want to know uh, what your feedback is from the show so that we'll improve, we'll get better. Uh, and at the end of it, you can put your email and phone number or Instagram handle so that we're able to you know, do better. We need to get feedback from you, how the comedians did, how the musicians did, how the artists did. So please make sure you feel that. And also, uh, what's the last one? Um, Yes, if you have your phones in the house, bring out your phone, make sure you do a Instagram live or a Facebook live and do the hashtag Night of Gospel Lab so that you know we'll get all the feedback from you guys. You know how it is. I'm not talking about those 50 over, I'm talking about 30 and under. Because maybe most people 50 and over don't have. Mama, you got Instagram, mama? Oh, okay, sorry, mama. Alright, alright. I'm not behind about to get some behind whooping in the house. Alright? So please make sure that uh, you know all the questions that are going around, please try to fill it out. Alright, if you've had fun tonight, make some noise! Alright now, ladies and gentlemen, I need everybody to put your hands together and start making noise for the man I'm about to call. They call him the richest Calabar man. How many of you are from Nigeria? How many of you are from the south-south area of Nigeria? I don't know if you know about the Calabar people. But well, they call this dude the richest Calabar man that just relocated from Nigeria to the United States of America last year. And already this guy is lighting up everywhere. Please put your hands together all the way from Baltimore, Maryland, C1! Oh, 
<laughs> All right, come on, put your hands together for yourselves. You guys have been awesome. Yeah. You've been awesome. I've had fun, I've laughed, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's good to laugh. Tell your neighbor it's good to laugh. Tell somebody it's good to laugh. Now, um, I am a church boy. I grew up in the church, and so many things I know about the church. Now, I want to advise worship leaders here. Do we have worship leaders here? Beautiful, I'm coming for you. Please, if they invite you to come and lead us in worship, please lead us in worship. Don't confuse us in worship. Now, you know what they do? They come out, they tell them, come and lead us in worship. When they come out, they, they act like they are more serious than you. You know, they do something like this. When they come out, you know, they have a serious face. Then they go, come on everybody, raise your hand. <laughs> now we raise our hands up. You say, come on, you can do it better. We stretch. You say, come on, you can do better. We are stretching more. He now goes, come on, you can. We say, my brother, sing, let's go sing. <laughs> on another high key. When the thing gets to them, they leave it for the backup singers. True or false? True. Now, this guy, we invited him in church, come and lead us in worship, the guy came out. What we heard? You know, when they don't remember the song, you know, they try to remember the song. If he doesn't remember the song, this is what they do. You hear something like this. <laughs> Microphone is smelling, return it. See, let's go. Now he switches and he starts doing something like this. Oh, mama, my, my, my. Oh, mama, my, my, mama, my, 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 my. The pastor said, if you want to eat my mind, tell us. See. Now, how many of you know this song? You are Alpha and Omega. That song has a high key. The guy is singing it now, sings it on another. Tell your neighbor, never! Say, 
will not go. It was a prayer program. When we got there, now, you know how the pastors back home do? They make it look like they, they are the ones sponsoring your life. They make it look like they are paying your bills. They come out. Say, everybody, stand up! He stood up. He said, bring out your gun. Everybody, position your hands. I followed. He said, are you ready? We said, yes. He said, cock your gun. We heard people did with their mouth. Crack, crack. The next thing the pastor said, are you ready? We said, yes. He said, locate your enemy. We started to for him. Inside the church. The pastor said, are you ready? We said, yes. He said, fire. We started shooting. Now, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you that are from Nigeria, and American um, brothers, let me explain. There's this tribe they call the Niger Delta. Now, those, oh, you know them, man? The milli oh, you're from the area. Yeah. 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 Now, those people, man, when they hear gunshots, they don't run. They move close to where the gun is. So two of the brothers, they were walking past the church. They heard the gunshots. They said, man, they are shooting inside the church. Let's go check it out. So they moved closer and discovered, when they got inside the church, they discovered they didn't have real guns. Now, they said, well, what are these people doing? Then the pastor said, tomorrow we want to continue with the prayer point. Prepare yourself and come. Two brothers from the Niger Delta, they love God. Two of them, they said, sir, you have one, two souls, we are coming. The next day, one of them entered the church with AK-47, sat at the back. The other one entered with what we call pump action. Sat at the other corner. Now the pastor was talking, the brother said, sir, the prayer point. He said, I'm coming. He said, raise the prayer point, sir. The pastor said, everybody, stand up. We stood up. He said, you're gone. We positioned our hand. Now the brother at the back, the Niger Delta brother brought out his AK-47. The man of God said, are you ready? He said, yes. He said, talk your God. We did crack, crack. The next thing, the man of God had The man of God said, hold on, do it. Cock the gun, I want to be sure you are ready. This time around, we did crack, crack. What he had, he had something entirely different. He had He was closing his eyes. Something told him, my son, open your eyes. He opened his eyes and saw AK-47 facing his head directly. The man of God laughed. <laughs> he said, people of God, drop your weapons. The weapons of our warfare, they are not cannon. They are mighty to the criminal of Now, like I said, I'm a church boy. And um, I observe a lot of things in church. And I want to ask this question. Why is it that when, when it's time for the pastor to preach, that's when people start sleeping. Have you noticed? A lot of people start sleeping. It's wrong. It's bad. No, 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 no. It's bad. Remember what happened to that lady in the Bible? That fell out the window. What's her name, man? Huh? The young boy, oh sorry, sometimes he changes. <laughs> okay. But you know, you know somebody fell. Whether it was a boy or a girl, somebody fell. There was a falling. Now, like I, I'm, I'm telling you, it's wrong to sleep because that's when you need to hear the word of God. But, but let, me, let me tell you something. If you want to know people that sleep in church, let me give you a typical example. Let me use a lower chair. Because you will understand this illustration. It's going to help you. For those of you that want to know that people that sleep. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, put your hands together for my bouncer. Sorry. <laughs> the 
Ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate Shane Brown. That's one of America's best. Yeah. Now, if you want to know people that sleep in church, observe me very well. This is what happens. Now, you know, sleep is like a butterfly. It flies around. And when it starts flying, you start feeling the effect. Now, when the sleep starts moving close to the person, this is what happens. The person starts flicking his leg. True or false? When you, if you want to know somebody that wants to sleep in church, this is what happens. He starts flicking his leg. Now, what is he trying to do? He's trying to fight the sleep. Now, the next thing he starts doing, he starts looking around like a thief. It comes. So when, at some point, he now looks at the pastor like he's listening and he's smiling. He's opening his eyes. When the sleep finally lands on him, this is what happened. His legs start slowing down. His eyes start giving.
listen, African mothers are the best. Let me explain. They are the best in disciplining their kids. Now, there's a tribe I love so much. That's where my brother is from, Shea Brown. We call them the Yorubas. that comes from Nigeria wants to discipline her child. They don't see, they don't stress themselves. There's, there's this slap that is unique to their tribe. Now, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say the, the slap and I'll explain what it means. Now, it's called Abara. How many people know Abara here? Now, let me explain what Abara is. Abara is a systemic slap. Now, when it comes on you, it returns you to factory setting. You need to trace it. You need to trace that. Now, if you misbehave from that tribe, you know what they do? The mother captures you. No, they don't hold you, they capture you. Now, when she captures you, she puts your head here and clips the head. Now, your back comes out. Now, she spreads her hand. She will drop the slap at a spot that your hand can't get to. And ladies and gentlemen, listen to me. Please listen. Only one dose is needed. Not more than one. And she drops the slap. Now, once she does that, she releases the child. Now, the reaction of the child is phenomenal. This is what happens. When she does that, the child try, tries to touch that spot, but his or her hands can't get there. This is what happens. Sustain this reply. So he goes, <laughs> Now, the mother does something like this come back here. The child comes back now. The mother now does something like this. She says, Fem. You know what fem means? Keep quiet. A child and ask a child not to cry. That's demonic. <laughs> now, when he tells the child, then the, now this is what happens. The child now swallows the cry. You see something like this. <laughs> now the mother says, go and sit down. Now the child comes to sit down. The younger ones come out. Now, when they come out, like they are coming to sympathize. Now, they will make a statement. Once they make that statement, the cry has to come. So, the, child, the guy is sitting down. They make this statement. They say, yeah. Once they make this statement, the cry has to come. Then they ask the brother. What did you do? Now he tries to explain. So the brother said, Are you crying? Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. I told you you just came back from the motherland, so you have all the motherland experience. Nobody is talking about Yoruba people. Yoruba people are unique in every way. And don't let me talk about his own side of the country. The Calaba people. Their names are not computer compliance. You cannot put a Calaba name on a laptop. You can put a Yoruba name in a laptop. What's your name? Baba Tunde Agitide. Baba Tunde Agitide. Put his wife's name. His name is Ura. Ask him, what is your name? Ura. Put his wife's name. Put his wife's name. 
to one of our major sponsors and we'll bring Roderick Rice back. He's going to finish the show. He's going to end the show for us on a high note. But uh, we're going to invite a representative of Wave Money Transfer. Please, a round of applause for Humble Prince and Brittany from Wave. A round of applause, please. If you're in the New York area, you must know the one and only non-humble Humble Prince. Beautiful Oibo is the, uh, uh, what's, that? what's the role for uh, Wave again? Chapter 5. Chapter 5. Chapter 5. My name is Brittany. I'm the director of Crow. Oh, you're director of Crow. You said director of Crow. Director of Crow. I'm going to take a look. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to turn that to you. And please, um, can you just pay attention to the video real quick? Before we say the words. Thank you. And we would like to tell you about Wave is a revolutionary way of sending money to Nigeria and to other African countries. Please visit our website for more information. Um, when you send money to Nigeria, somebody say no fees. No fees. No fees. No once, no fees ever. And when you send money to Nigeria to any bank account, the recipient gets it in less than three minutes. And you know how much. Nigerians like getting a lot. Yes, they like that. That's the best. That's the holiday news. Compliments of the season news that they want to hear. So please, uh, we're outside. We have uh, more information. We'd like to uh, find out more about the um, app. And for all the for all you guys tonight, we have a special. Um, if you put in the code Humble Prince, one word, you get five dollars free. When you send um, to your recipient, so you can tell the people that you give them. Let's say exchange it. Fifteen. Uh, you're yeah, giving them fifteen hundred dollars. I mean, naira. <laughs> they're not getting dollars um, extra. So go into the Wave app. I mean, go into the App Store or the Play Store and download Wave. And like I said, we'll be outside. Um, if you have, if you have any questions or need more information, I'm really just want to see if you would. Um, just want to say a huge thank you to Vega and everybody who organized the event and to everyone who's on the stage. It's a wonderful. Event. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for Wave. Yeah, like I said, it's an app on your phone. Download it, send money to your people that go. Uh, that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I want to say a big thank you to everybody that has come to support us tonight. We're ready to take you guys to the next level tonight and to end the show tonight. Once more tonight, a round of applause for Buddy and just close it out. I really, I ain't, I'm really gonna speak. Uh, I've been up since four o'clock this morning trying to get here, and here it is around eight o'clock at night, so I don't have that much more to say, except if you went to church and your regular preacher wasn't there, and Snoop Dogg was there preaching. Yo, say, what's cracking, man? I don't know when I think about the fizzle, I used to dizzle. Make me want to give gizzle a frizzle, a shizzle. Make me, make me, oh wait. And then, guess who will come in and sing Luther Vandross? Jesus love me so, this I know, yeah, yeah. For the Bible, it tells me so. When it comes to him, they belong, yeah, yeah. They Service who come in to preach? Bernie Mac. Oh, oh talk to you. Just for a couple of minutes. They gonna hold you along. They gonna show you some how to good book. And then they give an altar call. Guess who come down for prayer? Mike Tyson. Oh, well, thank you, boy. I just, I just want to know what they say. They say the time and pray. That that would be funny. That would keep me awake in church. I was, I was listening to the brother talk about going to sleep in church, and I, I, I've had, I've been in church most of my life. 
But I grew up in Compton, but I went to college at a predominantly white college. And um, <laughs> that was a totally new experience for me. <laughs> Thank God. Uh, the whole experience was different. Uh, when I went to my white friend's church, everything was different. The, uh, the service started on time. Uh, and when a white pastor prayed, uh, he, he don't get all excited. He's just so calm and friendly. You don't even know. You don't even know he's praying. He's just like, well, here we are, Lord. I want to say thanks for everything. Everything's going swell. Amen. And uh, you don't even know he's done. When they have offering, they just pass a sack on the stick right down the road. And uh, $1.2 million uh, without promising people things that they're going to never have. Another thing I love is the white choirs. White choirs stick to the book. They stick to the script. They don't add, neither do they take away. million dollar bill. I appreciate it. Make that million dollar deal right there, y'all. I just didn't want to be rude. We was both talking at the same time. So you know I was going to get you. I could just let y'all get away. Let, let me do this because I really want to go home and go to bed. I done already ate. I'm full. I'm ready to go to bed. But but black churches are different. If you know, especially Negro, Black, Baptist, African, Baptist, from the hood, it's different. See, when we start church, we start with the deacons and the devotion. Anybody y'all know about the black deacons and devotion? Yeah. They have deacons, but first the deacons be outside of the church. I thought they was holy men of God. I thought they were offering up burnt sacrifice. <laughs> then they go inside and try to lead what's called the devotion, and they can't finish the song because all that smoke can catch up with them. They start the song and then they go into this violent cough. They be like, I am on the battlefield for my Lord. Yes, I am. <laughs> it ain't no regular cough. It's a violent cough. Half of their right lung come out and be a little blood on their handkerchief. And then in the Black Baptist Church, the choir have to march in. I'm telling you. They they're not just up in the choir stand already. They gotta come in late. They gotta march in, sing your choir. Y'all know anything about the singing choir? They we come this far, Ain't he alright? I said, ain't he alright? Yeah. I said, ain't he alright? Then I 
back of why he going to nothing. He's like, mm mm mm. Humpty Dumpty. Sound the wall. Humpty Dumpty. Had a great fall. And all. And everybody's saying amen because they just want to go home like I know y'all want to do right now. I appreciate y'all. Stand on your feet. Everybody come on out. Everybody come on out. Everybody come on out. Everybody who's still here that participated, come on out. We're going to sing real quick. And then we're going to go. We're going to sing. Come on, sir. All the comics, all the entertainers, all the comedians. And we have uh, Baker in the house. Everybody. Just, just come on down. You know who you are. Simon. Come on down. Uncle Prince, everybody, please. Let's have everybody here. Come on down. Listen, and since it's almost one Christmas, we can do it like a poll called Joy to the World. We can actually do it. We can actually do it. Let earth and heaven and earth and heaven and earth and heaven and earth and heaven and earth and Let's give the Lord a big round of applause as she comes up. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Father God, we just thank you for this night that you blessed us with, Lord God. We thank you for all those that came in just to laugh, so that now, Lord God, we're filled with so much laughter. Lord, we thank you for the spirit of heaven that fell off. I know it fell off on me, Lord God, and for that I say thank you. Lord God, I ask for travel and mercy for everybody that's going back to their respective places, Lord God. And Lord God, we ask you to continue just to bless the banker so that next year, Lord God, like he said, be even more and greater sponsors, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that somehow, some way, we may even get a preload before that time even happens. Hallelujah! So Lord, we bless everyone. I plead the blood of Jesus on everybody in this place, Lord God. And Father, we thank you in the precious name of Jesus of Nazareth. Amen. Amen.